Sorry, I see I was muted. Derek, let me try you, that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let me try that again. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Derek DeRazio. I'm the Grants Branch Manager and Compliance Officer at North Carolina Emergency Management, or NCEM. And among many other responsibilities, um, my office, we call ourselves GMB, Grants Management Branch, um, are responsible for administering the FY24 Nonprofit Security Grant Program, or FY24 NSGP uh, Grant Program. Um, that's why we're here today uh, in a continuing series of information sessions to assist uh, what we call sub applicants um, who wish to apply for the FY24 NSGP program throughout the state of North Carolina. Uh, we have various staff members uh, from GMB, from Grants Management Branch, on the call this morning um, to assist with the presentation and answer questions. But we're really here for the uh, applicants or potential applicants to show y'all what's involved um, with the application, how to submit it. We are using a system called Salesforce this year to submit the application, um, and we're going to show you how to do that here in this presentation today. So, as you see, I've got the agenda on the screen. Uh, I'm Derek Durazio. We're doing the introduction. Mr. Bradley Garrett, <coughs> who is our NSGP program manager, will be doing a substantive program overview, including a walkthrough of our website, which really, when you all boil down to it, if you just Google uh, FY24 NSGP uh, NCEM, so FY24 NSGP, skip a space NCEM, you will come to our website and everything we're telling you today is really on the website. Um, it's, it's designed to be your one stop shop for everything you need for FY24 NSGP as a sub applicant. If you read that website, and follow it closely, all the information should be on there that you need to apply for the grant. Brad's going to walk you through the highlights of that and walk you through uh, the overview of the program. Um, Ms. Amanda Thaxton is our uh, expert in Salesforce registration, our new Salesforce grants management platform. Amanda is also the voice acting star of our YouTube video that's currently on our website that you can watch to tell you how to register in Salesforce. But Amanda is going to walk through the process and make sure everybody can be registered in Salesforce if you're not already uh, registered and how you create an account for your organization and associate yourself as a contact with that account. Um, you must do that to apply for the grant uh, this year. Um, and I'll walk you through a Salesforce demonstration with some assistance from Mr. Jeff Cox. And I'll, you know, I've created a fictitious account called Z Alpha Test. We'll pretend to be a nonprofit organization in North Carolina, and we'll actually walk through and, 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 and submit an application in the system and show you how it works. And then, of course, we'll have a question and answer session at the end. But anytime if you do have questions, please raise your virtual hand. Um, we'll also take pauses during the presentation uh, for any questions that you might have. So we're really here to be interactive and have plenty of time to answer your questions. Um, this session is being recorded as all of our sessions are recorded. They're put on our website. So uh, as the sessions are completed, we replace the link for the session uh, invite with the session recording. They're converted to YouTube videos and placed on our website. So all of our previous sessions are on the website and this one will be as well. Um, because they're being recorded, um, you know, we may infinitely have a couple people present you know, for the presentation. We walk through the entire thing because anybody can watch this presentation at a later time um, to take advantage of the information we're presenting. So we treat it just as if you know, we have many people in the room, maybe there's only a couple people in the room. Um, and go forward and record the record the presentation and proceed accordingly. All right. So with that, um, I'm going to give you just a, a broad, broad overview of the program, and then turn it over to Brad for uh, for the specific details. So uh, the FY24 NSGP program um, that um, you all will be competing for if you're a qualified nonprofit in the state of North Carolina uh, is total funding of four million two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. Uh, for the NSGPS or statewide program uh, allocated to North Carolina uh, in the FY24 NSGP and NOFO this year. Um, so what that means is if you are located in a county not touching Mecklenburg County, so not one of the counties touching Mecklenburg or any other county in the state, you will compete for $4,275,000 in NSGPS funding. Um, you can submit one application per site up to $150,000 if you have multiple sites your organization, you can just do three applications for a total of $450,000 um, to compete for those $4,275,000 in funding. Um, the application period already opened on 4-22-24 and has a hard stop. Please, if, if you don't remember this, I say, remember this. Hard stop to the application process on 5-24-24 at 11.59 p.m. Because the application process is in Salesforce, the system will cut you off and stop at 11.59 p.m. on 5-24-24. Please don't push it. Get your applications completed in Salesforce before that deadline. Um, that's essentially the money you're competing for if you're NHGPS. Now, if you are uh, located in what we call a UASI county, so Urban Area Security Initiative, that's Mecklenburg County and one of the counties touching 
Mecklenburg County, you were competing for a nationwide pot of money, $137,250,000 nationwide against all the other designated UIC regions across the country. Um, that's just a little different process because they are urban areas that are have uh, higher security uh, ramifications. They compete differently than the NSGPS program. Um, so all told, North Carolina uh, is the third ranked state uh, currently nationwide in terms of NSGP funding. Um, so we are very high up on the list of the money we get for our nonprofits from FEMA each year. Um, we did get a little bit less money this year than we got last year for our program. And that's only because due to the vagaries of the federal budget and the continuing resolution problems that they've had with the budget, um, they've pretty much slashed all non-disaster preparedness grants by about 10%. Um, so every state's getting you know about 10% less than they did last year, not just with NSGP, but with our various other non-disaster preparedness grant programs as well. Um, so that's by way of backdrop. That's the money you'll be competing for. Um, Brad will walk you through the substantive uh, program uh, here, but before we do that, are there any questions for me before I turn it over to Brad? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, Brad, and give it to you. Take it away, Brad. Good morning. Uh, let me get my slide together here, and we will talk about the, the program. I'm sorry, Derek, just give me a second here. Yeah, no problem, Brad. Take time. I don't know why I need to do this. Okay, I'm just going to go with this. I, I, For some reason or another, I'm having an issue trying to pull it up just on the other, on the other the thing. Uh, we're going to talk about the NSCP nonprofit security program. Uh, just got a few slides here. Uh, Derek's already gave you kind of an overview of what's going on with the program in terms of uh, the funding amount, the funding streams, uh, where we rank in the nation as far as how much we receive our, our state allotment, uh, the two funding streams being NSCP state on the state side, NSCP UA, which is the urban area, which is the UASI, the Urban Area Security Initiative. Uh, this is a little bit about the grant cycle right here. Uh, the grant cycle being, uh, like Derek said, right now we're in the application process, but in order to start that, the notice of funding opportunities released by FEMA, that gives us the uh, deadline per se for FEMAs, and then we as the SAA come up with the deadline that we give you as the subrecipients. So uh, our deadline is running from the 22nd of April through the 24th of this month at 11.59, okay? So during the application process, of course, you apply. This year is different. Uh, we have Salesforce now. Uh, you have to go through Salesforce in order to apply. It's more or less a two-step process. Uh, you apply in Salesforce, but you also still fill out the investment justification, the vulnerability assessment, and the mission statement. These, uh, these documents are now attachments to the Salesforce portal, to the application in Salesforce, and that's how you would apply. Okay, if you are awarded a grant, then we send out award letters. And on the, the other side of that, if you're not awarded, we send you out a declination letter. Once you get the award letter and uh, we usually ask you for a few things on the award letter, like who do you want to sign your MOA? Uh, there's required documentation that we ask for, five required documents. You send us back the award letter, then we send out, we put together the MOA. The MOA is the contract for the grant. Uh, you sign off on the contract, we go into contract with you now, and then the next step in the process would be cost reports, reimbursement requests. You'll hear that it's uh, interchangeable cost reports, RFRs, it's all interchangeable. Uh, when you request, not, but 
let's not go ahead of ourselves. To get to the cost report process, you may be required to do an EHP. Okay. Uh, we might want you to do one of those, and that has to go through FEMA in order to uh, fulfill certain requirements because anytime you're using spending federal funds, you have to go through, make sure that you're not infringing on any other federal agency, uh, like migratory boards might be going over your property, or you might have uh, historical, uh, your property might be on some historical land. So we have to make sure of those. So we have to send this and you fill it out. We send it back to FEMA. They okay it. Then you can move on with your, uh, to, to the funding portion of your grant, to getting your projects done. Okay, so also, during this whole process now, there's also reporting. Uh, there's yearly reports that have to be done for this grant now. Uh, we've switched from quarterly to yearly. And uh, that's all for if you are awarded, you know, it's, that's for that portion. And then uh, the period of performance on this grant is three years. So we get to the end of the grant and then we go through the closeout process. Uh, that's where we make sure that all documentation that you have submitted to us, that you still have it in file, we send out the uh, closeout letter to you, an official closeout notice, and we close the grant out with FEMA. So that takes you through the cycle of the grant. Okay, nonprofit security grant program. All right, nonprofit security grant program. All right, so it, it's it provides funding support for security, cybersecurity needs, uh, for at risk. High, at high risk, non uh, eligible 501c3s. Okay, uh, the pri the priority of this grant is to enhance the protection of soft targets in crowded places. That is one of the national priority areas that uh, FEMA is putting out. There's several, there's six priority areas, and for this grant, the top area is the soft targets in crowded places. A secondary one is the cybersecurity threat. Okay, so now uh, efficient, effective planning, planning in the event of an attack or threat from an actor. Let's just call it a bad actor. Uh, this grant pays for you to do planning things like uh, planning on uh, what, what what would you do in the event of an attack? What would you do in the event of uh, a, a shooter in the area, active shooter? Uh, and that speaks to the training, the uh, uh, shelter in place, the, the bleed training, uh, the active shooter training, uh, and also goes to an awareness ca uh, campaigns. You wanna have this information out to your congregations, to your, uh, to whoever uses your facility, uh, to your employees, you, you want to give this information out to them. And then the exercises, uh, the different exercises. Unfortunately, we do have to prepare for these and we do have to do exercises in the event that something could happen. Uh, lives are at stake. So Now, who's eligible for funding? Uh, Derek's already spoke on this. Uh, now, kind of touch on it again lightly. Uh, first of all, you must meet the description under Section 501c3 of the IRC, that's the Internal Revenue Code, uh, and be tax exempt under Section 501a. Churches inherently are considered nonprofits, okay? Um, that's in the code, the tax code. Uh, other nonprofits, uh, you should have a certificate showing that you are a nonprofit. We do not require it, but when you agree to this loan, you're attesting that you are a 501c3, please be a 501c3. Don't apply if you do not have your 501c3 status uh, or it's in question. Okay, uh, you must be able to demonstrate through the application that your organization is at high risk. You must be able to demonstrate that high risk of terrorist or other extremist attack. Okay, and for the NSGPS, you're located outside of the UASI. Here in North Carolina, the Charlotte area is designated as a UASI. So any, <clears throat> any place outside of the eight counties in the Charlotte area, you are considered to be applying for the NSGP state side of this grant. 
And then you have the NSC PUAC side, and that's the Charlotte area and the surrounding counties around Mecklenburg that touch Charlotte. And I think Stanley is the exception. They don't touch Mecklenburg County, but they are in the UAC. Uh, here's the funding stream. Derek talked about this again. Uh, the funding uh, amounts uh, from outside of, you can apply for uh, a max, you can apply for $150,000 per site, a maximum of three sites. Also on the UASI side, it's the same thing for those unique uh, entities that may have state and UASI size. If you apply for six, three on the state, three on the UASI, you can only apply for a total of 450. Okay, the FEMA's maxed out the award amount regardless to how many applications you have within a state. Okay, and this is the UAC. These are the eight counties that make up the Charlotte UAC. And as you can see, these all touch Mecklenburg County with the exception of Stanley. So here's your counties, Cabarrus, Mecklenburg, Stanley Union. Okay. Uh, this is a slide that shows the programmatic growth of the program here within the state. We're not giving you the total funding per year. We're just showing you the funding that the state of North Carolina received each year. Between 2018, where we only received $333,135, up to last year, where if you can look between 22 and 23, the jump. 22 was only 3.3 million. Last year, we were awarded 5.8. So uh, as Derek stated, there has been a cut in the funding uh, of the program, but uh, we still have on the state side the full point. And then the UIC side, it's more or less, I hate to say it like this, but it's sort of unlimited because there is no limitation. You're just competing for the whole UIC federal bucket, which is, uh, roughly a hundred and correct me, Derek, I think it's like 170 some odd million on the UIC side. Uh, this is yeah, how you apply. Yeah, the, UI, the UIC side you're saying, Brent? Yeah, it's 174.5 million, I believe. Uh, for this year, for FY24 yes. UIC, 137, yeah. 137 million, 250,000 dollars. Thank you, okay, yep. thanks, Derek. Thank you. Uh, so the website, Derek spoke about that. So I am going to go to the website now and talk about some things. Um, it, the website is pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you read through it, it's more or less, I sort of recapped most of the information that's there on the website. Uh, we've updated our website and made it very uh, user-friendly, uh, giving you all the information. We link uh, to all of the, uh, the FEMA websites to the pages to the information we have all the information listed on our on our web page in order for you to fill out an application uh, once again uh, like I said this year we are using Salesforce so our application process is different than it was uh, in prior years um, it's Salesforce and then you have to apply and then but uh, Derek's going to speak to all of that uh, Basically, for an uh, application to have a complete application, you've got to have your investment justification, your vulnerability assessment, your mission statement. And if you have additional documentation for, uh, let's say you've had incidents on your property, incidents at the location, you've had insurance, uh, you've put in insurance claims, uh, there's been particular threats uh, against you can also submit that, but the main three, the three documents that you have to have to have a complete application is the investment justification, the vulnerability assessment, and the mission statement. Okay, these are just related. And as you see, this is for recipients. Should you be awarded the grant, these are things that, that we need to talk about, but I'm going to point out the historical preservation uh, screening form. If you are awarded the grant and 
you have to do an EHP. An EHP is required if you are attaching anything to your building, inside, outside. If you're moving a thimble full of dirt, if you're putting a fence around the property, if you're putting bowlers outside, uh, new access doors, putting up the film for the blast resistance on the windows, you will have to do an EHP. And, and I think I did point out earlier that because of these are federal funds, uh, you don't want to infringe on other federal agencies uh, in, in terms of, uh, like I said, like migratory birds or something or historical properties. Uh, could be a, unknown. They could start doing some work and run into some historical find or something. And all of these things have to be addressed. The required documents, again, this is something else that if you are awarded, there's something that we will talk about at that time. Uh, this is for the competitive application, uh, the scoring matrix. That'll give you an idea of how each question is scored. The IJ is a series of questions. Uh, each question has a score value. Uh, the, I, uh, the matrix will let you know exactly how each question is scored, what what's being looked for, and you have to answer those questions accordingly. Uh, in the IJ, you want to answer your questions specific to your location, your organization, your community. Yes, if you uh, belong to a national organization and there's things going on, if, if your religious denomination or your cultural aspect is under threat, you can bring that up. But you have to more or less bring that into how it applies to your location and what's going on in your area. So you, you kind of have to, to go through this IJ and look at it and, and be reasonable on how you answer these questions. Uh, the, invest, uh, the vulnerability assessment, there is a self-assessment that you can do. And I believe this link takes you to the self-assessment. It does. Uh, or you could have local law enforcement come out and do that. The vulnerability assessment is the heart of the IJ, I mean, of your IJ. Uh, based off your vulnerability assessment, that's what you're going to be asking for funding for. Okay, this is the areas where we have vulnerabilities. This is where the threat exists for our location. And this is why we need CCTV cameras or we need contract security or we need to put in uh, blast resistance, we uh, fence, whatever the reasoning that's going to be stated here in the vulnerability assessment. Uh, these are the contacts for uh, the GMB for the grants management branch. Uh, as Derek stated, he is the manager, Janine Childs, myself, Lisa, Michelle Strong, and Amanda Thaxon. Amanda is now uh, my backup on NSVP. So she and I will be working diligently uh, on this. If you have any needs or anything, you can contact either one of us. Are there any questions? Derek, it's all yours. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Brad. Outstanding. Um, really good overview. Um, and, you know, um, I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen again real quick. And just real quick, walk you through the aforementioned website we talked about. Um, so as Brad said, the website, you know, kind of speaks for itself. We have all the information up here. Um, but uh, if you just again, just Google NSGP uh, space NCEM, you'll be able to find the website. Um, this blue box on the top of the screen is the information about Salesforce, including the link that you will need to either register for your account in Salesforce or if you already have an account to log into Salesforce. Um, Janine or somebody could please put that link in the chat to make sure folks have the link um, in case they don't have it. Um, this is the YouTube video I was telling you about. If you haven't registered yet, you can go and click on that YouTube video and walk you through the process, but we'll have a demonstration out here in a few minutes today of how you do it. Um, if you have any questions related to Salesforce, there's the uh, email address for that. Or for NSGP questions in particular, there's the email address for that. So that's in the top blue box of the website. Uh, everything we just talked about in terms of the funding, the eligibility requirements, the two streams of funding, UA and S, all on the website here, the counties that are the UIC counties. Um, here's the map I think that Brad showed you in one of his slides. Uh, the blue counties are the Charlotte UIC counties. Um, and everything else is the state program. So that's a nice feature of the website as well. 
Um, here's the funding amounts you'll be competing for, as we mentioned before. Um, here's the information about the award uh, maximum that you can apply for. Essentially, most folks apply for $102,000 uh, for one location, but if you do have multiple sites, you can apply up to $450,000 um, per each site. Um, if you have locations in both the NSGPS and the NSGP um, UIC area, you can, you can submit the six applications if you had the three sites in each. But again, your total amount of funding you request cannot exceed $450,000. Um, and that's per state. So if you have operations in other states, you have a, you know you have a different cap and, and different rules in those other states. So $450,000 each state uh, in North Carolina. Um, this talks about the target hardening Brad mentioned. This is the example projects that we, we briefly described. Um, so if you have, we need some ideas of what folks have applied for in the past and what's been successfully funded, uh, here's some great examples. You click these links, as well as in the NOFO on page eight to nine, there's a list of example projects as well. Um, and again, contracted security, fencing, lighting, cameras, security, uh, doors, window treatments, et cetera. Um, you know, it, 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 and, and it's, at its simplest terms, um, this grant is designed to prevent incidents from happening, right? It's not a response grant to respond to an incident once they have it's designed to present, uh, prevent those things from happening in the first place, right? So how do you prevent bad actors from doing bad things to your location? That's what this grant's intended for in its simplest terms. Um, again, here is the uh, well, one quick note about contract security. Uh, we have it on here, but contract security um, must be that it must be contracted. Um, you can't pay salary for existing people on existing security people on staff. Um, you can't just go pay somebody to do from your church or your organization to go do security for you. You must contract it out and follow procurement rules. Typically, that involves three bids. Um, and I believe the contract security uh, can be no more than half of your total award uh, and the amount that you can receive. So I think if you get a total award of $100,000, the most you can have $75,000 contracted security. So a little special rules on contracted security. Um, that way, this walks through the rest of the information there about eligibility. Um, again, hard deadline, 11.59 p.m. on May 24, 24 in Salesforce. Hopefully, we'll drop that link in the chat in Salesforce so you can see uh, how to access Salesforce. Um, your applications must contain um, basically three things. So you'll fill out a few screens in Salesforce. You will have to include a vulnerability assessment. You will have to include your investment justification form, which is the actual application form from FEMA, and your mission statement. So those three things must be uploaded to Salesforce along with a few screens you fill out in Salesforce. And then you have the opportunity to um, attach any other supporting documentation that you want uh, in support of your application. So that can include um, police reports of actual incidents that happened. It can include crime statistics of the of, you know, of your of your neighborhood or the location where you're located. Um, it, it could include um, you know, internal reports or write-ups of security incidents that happened at your property. What you're basically trying to show is how your site is at risk of uh, an incident. Um, so that's what you're trying to do with that additional documentation. Again, not required, but I've seen successful applicants submit that documentation in the past to support their application because this is a competitive application process. Um, and here is the link to all of our um, sessions that we've had. So you'll see the sessions we've had so far. Um, and then as we move forward, we have a few more sessions left, um, May 9th, 13th, 20th, and 23rd of session on that last day. Um, on the right hand side of the screen here, you will see application documents. So if you click on that, this takes you to everything you need to help you apply. Okay. And what I want to point out for you here is this investment justification form. Basically, before we get into Salesforce, you're going to have to go ahead and have your investment justification form completed. It's a PDF document, and you're going to click on that. Now, when you click on that, you're going to get this almost looks like an error message, right? It says, please wait. Um, for more assistance, blah, 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 blah. This is not an error message. Basically, this form is not viewable on the web, okay? It's not, you can't fill it out on the web, you can't view it on the web. You must download the form to your local computer and open it up in your Adobe program or PDF program of choice. Free Adobe works fine on your local computer. So when you wait, when you see this screen, do not, do not, uh, you know, do not, do, do not be discouraged. Um, we get a lot of questions about this, but do not be discouraged. Simply hit the download button, download it to your own computer. So I just use it to put it in a downloads folder. Okay, hit save. All right. 
And then when you go to your own computer in a downloads folder, open up the program from there and you will see the IJ. All right. So it does, it's not web fillable or web viewable. You must download it to your machine and then go ahead and fill it out um, on your machine. And once it's on your machine, you can go ahead and fill it out with, again, a free Adobe program. Okay. So there's that. Um, so that's pretty much what I wanted to walk you all through here at this point. Um, again, we will take a pause now for any questions. Okay, seeing none, we're going to go on to the next part of our agenda, which is Miss Amanda Thaxon with a Salesforce with a, a demonstration of how to um, properly register uh, in Salesforce. Uh, take it away, Amanda. Good morning, everybody. I hope you're all doing well today. Um, I'm going to go through how you register for Salesforce. Um, so when you come to this link, uh, this is similar. It's not the exact one. I like. I don't like to test in production. Um, and you'll see new user. Click here. Uh, and then basically everything with a red asterisk has to be filled in. Um, so uh, just fill those in um, because I'm filling it out as a nonprofit. I'm going to just uh, fill it out as um, that um, and then. And for phone number, what we really want is whatever phone number you're going to answer. Um, you can you cho can choose to answer the uh, answer these questions or not. It's your call, but we really just need to know what phone number you answer most often. Um, and then if you are a new user, you click this uh, new user requesting access um, and you need to say I'm a representative of an applicant organization. Um, if you know that somebody else in your program has um, actually registered, you can search it here. Um, And then just hit enter and it should might pop up. If not, you can just go down here to where it says organization name. Um, and then you'll put your classification, which is either a nonprofit or a nonprofit with 501c3 or uh, 501c3 status. Your unique entity ID is your SAM ID. If you don't know that, you can just write TBD. Um, and your federal employment identification number is your fine number. Um, I'm sure everyone knows that. So uh, you just put that number in right there. Your requested permission act level. Um, I'm going to full access because I apply for grants. And then down here for program, just select NSGP. You don't need to put FEMA NSGP or anything like that. It's just NSGP. Um, this helps us. Um, expedite your registrations um, and then basically you just click register and wait for a couple of days for Felicia Cromwell Johnson to give you an email or Salesforce to give you an email to say hey you're all registered in the system um, let's get this taken we'll you know go ahead and get started um, and so that's pretty much it thank you thanks Amanda so I see we have a couple organizations on the call right now um, I think we have uh, First Cavalry uh, and we have uh, Jordan Price. I don't see anybody else. Um, can I ask the two of y'all at this point, have you registered in Salesforce already? <clears throat> we'll start with First Cavalry. Yes, we've we, we have registered in Salesforce. Okay, great. Any problems or issues or so far okay? No, but I do have one question. I, I was understanding that we could have multiple users able yes. to access the account is that correct you can you can have up to five we call them contacts up to five contacts associated with your organization's account um, so the same process you just went through to register yourself as the organization and the contact um, that whoever else is with your organization have to do the same thing and request that access you have, you have to total five total people i was having i was having difficulty determining how to go about adding the additional people yeah. And so if you could kind of yeah. tell me they're, where I. Yep, yeah, they're, they're going to have to go through that same process that that Amanda just showed you. So let's say you're um, you're you're Sally 
and you know Bobby wants access, right? Sally goes on, creates the account for the organization, is a contact associated with the account. Once that once that associate once that contact is created, then Bobby goes on and requests to be a contact associated with that particular account. So um, Amanda, do you want to go ahead and 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 demonstrate or discuss how that will work for the follow on uh, contacts? Yes, all follow up count contacts will be added into that same um, organization account. Um, so it's basically the account is kind of, let's say, the, the main thing, and then you're all uh, filtered under that, if that makes sense. Um, so when they register, we'll make sure that they go to the same account. Uh, and then uh, that's pretty much it. It's just have them register in the system and we'll take care of it from there. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. And uh, Jordan Price, um, are you registered in Salesforce? Yes, we were able to get registered. Uh, my only question was, and this may be answered later, but if we're applying for multiple locations, do we yep. register multiple times or create multiple applications within the one yep. account? No, great question. No, so it's multiple applications with one account, right? Okay. You can have up to, depending where you're located, if you have just locations in S or, or UA, um, it's up to three applications, $150,000 each. Um, if you had locations in both UA and NSGPS, you can submit the six applications then three UA and three S. Again, all with one account, no more than $450,000 is your total max. Okay. Um, and with that, are you going to go over how to create those multiple yeah. applications? Yeah, we, we can show you that, sure, no problem. Hey, Brad, what do you also, want you to Also yeah. want to point out, if you are applying for multiple locations, there's a separate IJ for each location as well as a separate vulnerability assessment for each location. Absolutely, that's a great yeah, point. Thanks. And then can you do the one mission statement? For yes, the, yeah. yes okay. that's just the mission statement for your organization. Perfect. Yep. All right, great. So it sounds like we have some Salesforce pros already in here and just a few other minor questions. We'll address those in our walkthrough. Um, I did want to point out real quick before we get to the walkthrough, Amanda mentioned the UEID. Uh, I don't know if your organizations have a UEID, but it is something you will have to get if you don't have it. You can apply for the grant without a UEID, but you cannot be awarded any funds. If you are selected for funding, you cannot be awarded any funds unless or until you have a UEID, a unique entity identification number. Um, that's basically, you get that through SAM.gov. So if you just Google UEID, um, space SAM, S-A-M, so UEID space S-A-M, you will see the website for that. It's free, it's no cost to you to get that. Um, it's kind of like a social security number for your organization with the federal government. It stays with that organization for life, never changes. And once you have it, you can use that to apply for and be awarded any kind of future federal funding. Um, but again, you will not be able to receive funding from us unless you have a UEID. So you don't have one, or anybody's watching this recording, if you don't have one, Please make sure you go ahead and get that as soon as possible. Again, no cost to do that, but please, but it can take some time to get that to get that going. So please make sure you do that. Um, the other thing I want to point out too, before we launch into the application process, just understand that I think this was mentioned before. NSGP is a reimbursement grant. Uh, really, all the grants that we administer through North Carolina Emergency Management are pretty much reimbursement grants. What that means is, you as the organization must front the money yourself, right? You must engage and, and complete. The expenditure yourself, um, you must you know pay, pay the money, receive the good or service during the period of performance of the grant. It must be an eligible expenditure, you know, related to the approved application and scope of work, um, and in accordance with the a contract you will sign, the MOA document you will sign. If you incur that eligible expenditure, if the good or service is received during the period of performance, and if you submit the appropriate, right, then when you submit the appropriate documentation, you will then be reimbursed for those expenditures up to the maximum award amount of the grant. OK, so if you don't have the money necessarily to buy these things, these goods or services up front, um, then you really need not apply for this grant. So please understand it as a reimbursement grant. And the reason they're reimbursement grants, and this is putting on my hat as compliance officer, I'm not just the grants branch manager, I'm also the compliance officer, um, is that's the way we primarily ensure compliance with our, with our subrecipients because you don't get paid unless it is a eligible expenditure, right? If you try to slide something there that's ineligible, you don't provide the right documentation, uh, you try to get something that's outside the peer performance of the grant or not related to the scope of your work, you will not be paid for that, okay? So you basically have to follow the rules to get paid and then you get paid. That's how we ensure compliance with our grants. That's why we make this a reimbursement grant. All right, having said all that. Eric, can I, can I add yes. on to that, uh, yep. what you just said? 
yep, uh, yeah, as you. Derek said about the reimbursement, uh, the portion of this, but also uh, lately we've had a couple of, well, a few subrecipients coming back and rescinding the grant for, for whatever reason. Uh, the first one, the big one was because they were not fully understanding the reimbursable part of the grant. But now also, uh, just recently, we received a notification from a subrecipient because their organization was not fully informed about the grant. And now there was questions brought up and they decided, well, we can't go for it with this grant. So please make sure that you touch bases with your organization, your legal department, if you have a regional office, uh, uh, area office, whatever. Make sure everybody is on board with the grant because it gets down time to start doing uh, reimbursements or started working on projects. And then all of a sudden, some other area in your organization comes up and say, hey, we can't take this grant. And now you've been awarded. It's in the process. And we've got to scramble to try to find somebody else to give the funding to. And it can become something of a, of a headache, especially if it's later on in the process. Or like now, where we're trying to work on 24, and now I'm going back trying to work on 22 and 23 grants. So keep those in mind. Yeah, great point, Brad. Great point. It's always good to coordinate with your own finance uh, your folks to make sure they're engaged in this grant process throughout, you know, throughout throughout the process. Um, one thing I will also mention to you that's thrown some folks for a little bit of a loop. Um, pretty much, if you receive this grant from us, or if you receive any money really from any state agency whether it's federal money passed through a state agency in North Carolina or directly from state agencies themselves, you will have to complete what they call level one to three financial reporting every year. So within so many days at the end of your fiscal year, you have to file level one, two or three financial report. Uh, that information is on our website and I can show you where it is. But basically, depending how much money you receive, level one is so much, level two is so much, level three is the highest. You must file that report uh, every year. There's an email address to send it to on our website, basically just reporting you know, the funds you receive, the receipts and the expenditures and what you did with the money. Um, additionally, if you receive or expend a total of $500,000 or more in any kind of total state grant and federal funding received from state agencies in North Carolina, an audit requirement kicks in. We have to, must do an audit as well, $500,000 or more. So um, just be advised that there are financial reporting and potential auditing requirements. So it's always good to pull those finance folks into the grant discussion early, even before you apply to make sure they're on board with that. Okay, uh, Derek. Derek, yeah, uh, I wanted to okay. add to our answer to the first cavalry, the the question about yeah. the second registration, if I could. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, just yeah, just I'll, yeah, quickly. Let me uh, just want to share my screen. Yeah, please do. Okay, yes, let's see. Did I share. And, and I should introduce Jeff Cox. Is our he's our system administrator for Salesforce, so he's truly our our technical subject matter expert. He's kind of the the wizard behind the curtain, if you will, when it comes to Salesforce. So we, we appreciate Jeff Jeff chiming in here. I oh, appreciate that, Derek. OK, and just to want to show you a picture of what uh, Amanda was describing is that that for that second register registrant that goes through, fill out the application the same way. The, the only difference being is that when you get down to the organization, instead of selecting no um, for is it registered? Well, well, first cavalry is at this point registered with that first registration. So you would um you would say the organization. Yes, it, it is. It is registered in the system and then just go down to find um, to find first cavalry in this very long list. <laughs> and there it is. So you would just yeah. select. So you just uh, select first cavalry there. And, and Jeff, does, does that search feature work there with the search the list um, up to the up to the right of organization? Yeah, yes, it works. And I, I did it the long way. So yeah, good, good, uh, <laughs> good, good spot there. OK, yeah. so that, that's all. That's all I had. <clears throat> and then just submit, right. uh, normally. Perfect. Thank you, sir. All right. Any questions before we turn into the, the most fun part of this, which is going to be our Salesforce demonstration? All right. Let's get at it then. All right. So everybody can see that um, when you log on, once you have your account created and you're a contact associate with the account and you log on, um, you will you should see this screen. So, you know, matter of fact, if you're following along at home and you have your Salesforce all set up, why don't you go ahead and just, you know, log on yourself and take a look at it. It should look very similar to what you're seeing right here. Um, this is called the North Carolina North Carolina Emergency Management Grants Portal for Preparedness and Hazard Mitigation Grants. Um, we are preparedness grants. Uh, we share this portal with our hazard mitigation uh, brethren. So across North Carolina Emergency Management, we have different um, groups of folks who administer different grants, hazard mitigation, primarily those grants to require disaster declaration. 
Um, there's not a whole lot there for nonprofits, um, but we do share this platform with them. But we are the parents grant side. Anyway, long story short, this will be your homepage. Um, when you go to the homepage, if you click on available grants, you will see the grants that you can apply for. Um, and we'll show that in a minute. But before you do that, um, these things up top here, uh, these are called objects in Salesforce speak. So if you go to the account profile object, now I am logged on, as I said, I created a fictitious account called Z Alpha Test. All right. And that is uh, me right here. Okay. So when you click on your account profile, anywhere you see a little pencil, you can simply click on that and update that, or that information. So please, before you start your application, go into your account profile, your grant application, go into your account profile and update your account information because the, the system brings over that account information and imports into the grant application for you. And if you don't have it updated correct in this object, it'll pull over the incorrect information. So please make sure all this is updated correctly. Um, so, you know, let's just say, um, wait a minute, I'm not, a, I'm not just a nonprofit organization. I'm actually a qualified 501c3 nonprofit. I'm going to change my status. All right, just come and do that. Hit save. That should be good there. And let's see. Uh, wait a minute. Um, I have. I don't have 50 employees. I've got. I've got 100 employees. We're larger than that. Let me just simply change that. And there you go. So anywhere you see a pencil, it's an updatable field. And these things are called fields that you fill in. Objects up top, fields that you fill in. OK, make sure make sure your address information is correct. Put your website in there if you have it. Um, make sure your phone contact information is correct. Um, you know, make sure your county is correct in there. That's kind of important for UIC purposes, whether you're UIC or not. Um, some of these things, again, because it's shared with hazard mitigation, we don't necessarily need them. So jurisdiction type, plan type, plan type, you can leave those blank. That's more for hazard mitigation grants. Here's the FANE Amanda was talking about. This is actually your federal tax identification number, your federal employee identification number. Um, so you must have that as well um, to apply for and receive a grant. So you put your FANE in there. Um, this is the UEID I was telling you about, and there's the website to get your UEID. It's a 12 character alphanumeric value. Um, you must register in SAM to get a UEID. So the answer should be yes. Now, SAM registration only is valid for one year at a time, and you must maintain currency in SAM registration. So every year you must renew again in SAM. Uh, it's free of charge to do that, but you must do it every year. You must put your expiration date here. UEID, one UID never changes, lasts a lifetime. SAM registration, you have to renew it every year. Okay? That's where you have to keep that updated there. And that's pretty much the information on that screen. Now, those are that's your account information, okay? Then you have your contacts associated with the account. And again, we let you have up to five contacts associated with each account. And there is no cost to you whatsoever to use Salesforce, but there is a cost to us, right? We pretty much get charged um, almost on a per use basis. So every time an applicant or a grantee logs on to Salesforce, we kind of get charged for that, that usage. So we don't let there be like 100 people associated with an account, right? Because it would cost too much for all those people. So we limit it to five, so we keep the cost down for ourselves. But again, no cost to y'all. You can have up to five associated with your organization. Um, in this case, we have three. Um, um, Sub-applicant Derek, I'm going to click on myself because I'm going to want to apply for the grant here. I want to make sure all my information is correct because, again, it's going to go ahead and import that information over from this object into my application. So I want to make sure this is this is updated before I complete the application. So look at all this information here. Again, wherever I see a pencil, I can change it. Um, wait a minute. My phone number is not right. Let me fix that phone number. Uh, I'm not 919-111-3337. I'm 3338. That's my phone number. They got it wrong here. All right, so I go ahead and update that. So again, make sure all this information is updated. Um, OK, you're going to see some other stuff here because this is a test um, you know, account we created. So just ignore that. You won't see much of that here. It's just some other stuff you would see if you have multiple applications. Um, so go ahead and I'll make sure my contact information is correct. All right, my accounts update, my contacts correct. Now I'm ready to go ahead and apply for the grant. Go back to the home page, hit available grants. <clears throat> Give a second to load it up. Please always um, make sure when you see this black arrow up here, make sure you drop down to all available or available or whatever it says all. If you do recently viewed, you may not see what you're looking for. OK, a lot of times people have it set to recently viewed. They see nothing like, oh, my God, something's missing. No, you just haven't selected the right list view. 
Okay, so please always make sure it's all available. So I did that and you can pin it. And that means it's pinned here. So your default view will always be the all available grants. Okay, but if you don't change that to default for all available, it will default to recently viewed and you might not see what you need to see. All right. So in this case, I'm good all available grants. And there's my there's the grant I'm interested in, right? My nonprofit security grant program ran SGP. All right, so I simply click on that. And this is what you will see. This is what we call um, th this is the published grant in Salesforce. OK, so it's largely based on the information from the notice of funding opportunity that we received from FEMA. We kind of transport some of that information onto the screen so you can see the relevant details. Um, so here you'll see all the relevant information about NSGP kind of summarized for you, including that all important peer to performance. OK, so uh, peer to performance is anticipated to start 9-1-2024 and end 8-31-2027. So it's about a three year grant. So what that means is you have about three years to spend all that money you're going to be award, hopefully awarded and receive with this grant. So you got $150,000, you have one site, um, you got three years to spend that money. All your expenditures must be incurred within these dates to be eligible. Can't be expenditures that were before the pop, can't be expenditures after the pop. All expenditures and goods and services must be received within those three years. Okay, so that's good, important information to understand there. Again, very important information. When are the when's the application due? Hard deadline, 11.59 p.m., 5.24.24. Um, inevitably, I'm sorry to say, there will be folks who miss that deadline. There's nothing we can do for you. So please understand, 5.24.24, 11.59 p.m. Um, this is the information about the funding, as we mentioned. If you're in the S and SGPS program, there's $4,275,000 available. Um, the most you can get is $150,000, but that's per site. Okay. Um, basically, um, this management administration, this is how much we get as a state to help us run the program um, from FEMA's perspective. But you as a sub recipient can also get up to 5% of your award or no more than 5% of your award for m &A. OK, so you can, if you had $100,000 award, right, take 5% of that, $5,000 of that could be m &A, management administration. So just to be, be aware of that. Um, OK, that's the information about the grant. Here's some website links you can go to. Um, to get more information. Now I'm ready to apply. All right. Let's see here. I'm not eligible to apply. All right. Let's go ahead and fix that real quick. I think I might know why this is. Yep. That's yep. that's my fault. I was doing some okay. testing with our yep. test account. Sorry about that, yep. Derek. So I, I got to change the county, right? Or non? Uh, no, you have to. It, it was it non? It probably wasn't set to nonprofit. Okay, let me let me go ahead and just do that. Yeah, the too, classification. Too. Yeah, let me make sure I got all that right. This this is just an artifact of us uh, of us testing here. Make sure it says nonprofit. We'll, we'll set it again here. We this is our this is our kind of playground account here. Sometimes we we, we test a little bit here and we get ahead of ourselves. All right. Um, let's try it again. All right, I'm going to go ahead and apply. All right, ready to apply. Yes, I am. There we go. All right, we're all good. Again, it imports my information from my account. Okay. It's going to ask me again, are you a nonprofit organization? Yes, I am. Is your organization located within the UAS, the Urban Area Security, uh, Security Initiative area, the Charlotte area? No, I'm not. OK, I picked uh, Alamance County in this one. All right, so I'm not. OK, pick your POCs who, who are going to be a name associated with this grant. Sub-applicant Derek. Um, and I'll do a secondary sub-applicant Jeff. So that's the POCs for the grant. I'm ready to go. All right, am I good? Yes. At any time, you can go ahead and click out of it. It assigns a unique application number for you. Uh, and then um, you can always come back to that application later. All right, but for now, I'm good to go. I hit save and next. All right, and title. This is mostly going to be target hardening. Okay, now let's just say you had multiple locations for the organization has multiple locations. I would call this target hardening, you know, Wake County location, you know. Um, all right, then you got to create a budget line. Uh, you must pick a category, planning, equipment, organization, training, or exercise. Uh, here, I'm going to go ahead and pick equipment. I want to buy, uh, let's say I want to buy 
some lighting. All right, cost, it's gonna cost me $150,000 for this lighting. AEL. All right, AEL, you're gonna get this from your application itself, okay? Or from the investment justification form itself, excuse me. So on the investment justification form, all right, uh, on looks like page five of that form. As you're building out your budget, there's a drop down list here. All right. And you can see all the different AEL numbers associated with all the different goods and services. Uh, let's see, is there one for lighting? There we go. Lighting area fixed. So 14 SW uh, light. That's my AEL. Just going to copy that over to here you must have the AEL you must have the cost you must have the description you must have the proper pro eddy category planning organization equipment exercise or training why create this you could create multiple lines here I've used minor fifty thousand dollars for the single item of lighting Hit no okay I'm finished with the review of the budget here gives you a unique budget line associated with that budget it's all good to go all right, you must download your IJ, mission statement, vulnerability stuff, and other supporting documentation. Um, hey, uh, Jeff, if you're on right now, I'm getting called away into another meeting. Unfortunately, I got to attend here at 11 o'clock. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just finish this up real quick here in the next minute, and then we'll let you take over uh, from okay. there on the demonstration. All right, so let me just finish this up. Save it next. Okay, you can upload the documentation here. So upload your IJ here. All right, so this, this takes it back to your computer. Where's that IJ we just did? So again, you must have your IJ completed. So you're going to upload your completed IJ. This is the most important part of your application. Of course, now that I really need to leave, it's taking forever. <laughs> so, okay, there we go. All right, um, there's your IJ. Um, and then what you're going to do for your other documents that are required, go down here to other. Um, and I think we have mission statement as big as yes, we do in this big long list here. Go to mission statement. OK, upload your mission statement. All right, let's just say uh, there's my mission statement right there. All right, there's a the mission statement and then go to other again. And pick your vulnerability assessment from this big long list. There's vulnerability assessment. Upload your vulnerability assessment. Um, let's just say um, there's my vulnerability assessment. All right, I've got all my documents uploaded, successfully uploaded right there with the green. Save and next. Here's your certifications. There's six certifications you must complete because it's a federal application. You must select yes for all these certifications. Basically, um, don't lie. If you lie on this application, it's a federal offense. Um, there's law, and it's a state law violation as well. All sorts of nasty stuff can happen to you. So please don't lie. It's not worth it. Save it next. And your application has been submitted. And if you look at your applications object here, again, you're going to see a number of applications. We've played with this account before. The one we just submitted is application 366, the output test. All right. And you've just completed your application for FY24 and SGP. With that, folks, I have to run to another meeting. Jeff, can you take over the rest of the demonstration from there, sir? Um, sure. Thank you, sir. I'm going to log off. Thanks, all. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? It's still recording. I'm going to stop the recording now. Um, but uh, please continue with this uh, presentation, Jeff. And uh, I'll try to join later if it's still on. But if not, have a great day. It's been fun. I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye. Okay. I'm just... Uh... Sharing my screen. Hopefully, it's sharing. Um, yeah, where Derek left off, he uh, he he left off with your the uh, application he submitted is shared, and and as it turns out, he took us uh, all the way all the way to the to the very end and and showed that that's where your application is. Um, all all that's left, uh, I guess, to add to that is <clears throat> is that even though the application is submitted. Um, you'll have until the end of the uh, application period, which um, I, I believe is uh, May 24th.
So you can come back in here and open up this application and change anything about it, dollar amounts, um, anything that you want to know. But it'll be in your uh, your your uh, list right there on your um, your account your account view. And that's all um, that's all I have for applications. Okay, um, Janine. Okay, um, well, we are at our 11 o'clock hour. If there are any questions, um, we can answer those at this time. Hey, I, um, I had a question. So I went to create, I guess, start the separate applications for each location that we have. And I was able to create the first two. When I went to create the third, it said an unhandled fault has occurred in this flow. Do you know what that error might be? Uh, uh, we probably have a record. Uh, when, uh, when did you when, when, when did you do that submission? Um, when so I tried last week and I just tried again just now. OK, well, we we have a record of that and um, we will absolutely. In fact, Val, if you wanted to hold just a minute, I can uh, can verify. Make sure. Yeah, and thanks for the, bringing that to our attention. Let's see. Just now, right after 11 o'clock? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, the, let's see, it says your street Data value is is too long. You, you you have 35 characters to work with. We didn't give you a very graceful error message to inform you of that, but 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 instead of 3020i at Prosperity Church Road, if you can try it again and just have no more than 35 characters um, in that. Okay. I'll see. There's a sweet number, so I'll see if it lets me. Just try shortening it. Maybe do RD for road. That's one opportunity. Yep. Yeah, it looks like you just need you got your, it's three characters long, maybe three or four. Yep, that worked. Thank you. OK, great. All right, if there are not any more questions at this time, we thank everybody for joining us and participating today. Thank you to all the members of our team, um, Brad, Amanda, Jeff, and all of our staff here supporting the team, Michelle Strong and Felicia Johnson. Um, thanks also to Derek, our fearless leader. Thank you all. Have an awesome day.